So, I'm starting the morning off with some bad video takes, re-recording, re-recording. Number one, um, I wanted to apologize for day two's audio quality. Um, I've got the lav mic on again. It wasn't connected fully to the, um, to the really old iPhone that I use um, for doing the audio recording when I don't have the boom mic out. So, sorry about that from yesterday. Uh, it, watching it, the audio was good enough, but not great. And so I'll try to work on that more. Um, also, just being here in the desert, anywhere in the southwest right now, the winds just get stupid sometimes. So even with a lav mic, even with another external mic, um, the wind gets absolutely crazy. Uh, I've had moments in the Airstream where, you know, I'm sitting on the couch saying, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. It just gets that bad. So uh, before I start talking about... Um, today's solar lesson information. Uh, I just want to say, so one big part of boondocking um, <laughs> is what's going on with the hair right now. I'm looking terrible. It's like horrible bedhead going on. Um, I don't have to worry too much about power in the Airstream. So my hot water heater's running right now. My water pump's on right now. The fridge is running. And if you hear the hum in the background, that's my Dyson um, HEPA filter. So I'm running stuff. I'm not worried about power, but water is a really big issue while boondocking. So I um, filled up my 40-gallon tank the other day, and I took a shower on Wednesday. Thursday was day one of getting on the road, um, and that got me to quartzite. Friday, which is yesterday, was day two on the road. So I hadn't cranked up the, um, the shower yet. So here we are on Saturday. I showered on Wednesday night. I'm feeling gross and sticky, so absolutely today is going to be a nice hot shower day. And I'll be doing that in a little bit. But so when you see me with the hats on, there's two reasons for the hat. Number one, going outside in the desert southwest, um, sunglasses and hats, because otherwise I'm blind and seeing sunspots while I'm recording these videos. Um, so number two, my hair goes crazy. So when I hiked the Appalachian Trail years ago, one of the kids that was hiking with us, his trail name was Maestro. And um, we got into Damascus, Virginia. So that was the 450 mile point of the through hike. And I decided to go to a local barber to get my hair cut. And when Maestro saw me uh, later in the week, he got really disappointed because he thought I had some of the best bedhead on the Appalachian Trail, that my hair would just do crazy things. So, um, so here I am with bedhead today. All right, now let's talk for a few minutes. Uh, so what am I talking about on uh, day three of seven days of solar? Well, here on day three, I wanted to talk to you about when to charge your appliances and devices and when not to. So the sun is coming up. I've got the sun hitting my solar panels. I'm starting to generate electricity. But my batteries are a little lower this morning. They're below 90% because I had the heater running last night. Um, I have parasitic draw, which everybody does. There's always a little extra draw on your RV batteries overnight. So charging stuff overnight is a bad plan. Um, you need your batteries overnight to run the basics, to keep your fans on, to keep your heater going, etc. So the best time of day for charging things, for plugging this iPhone in to the, um, to the inverter or to one of my DC outlets, the best time of day to charge all of these devices is um, late morning to early afternoon when you're getting the most power out of your panels. So. Last night, after the sun went down, I popped open my MacBook Pro and I watched a movie. And so the MacBook Pro, before going to bed last night, it, the battery was at about 67%. So in a little while, I'm going to flip the inverter on and I'm going to charge my MacBook Pro. Um, because I know that I'm going to be generating more power into the batteries than I'm using. So that's the right time of day to plug a bunch of things in. If you come back at the end of the day from all of your wandering and running around and taking photos and enjoying where you're at 
I understand you want to plug some of your devices in before bed to get them charged up for first thing in the morning. So I would recommend, yeah, go ahead and throw the iPhone on or recharge a camera battery. Um, but if you're watching movies and things, the MacBook Pro takes a lot more power than charging my iPhone or charging my batteries. So I was watching it last night when, um, when I had the MacBook Pro, Pro plugged in with everything else running. I was at negative 4.8 amps, so I was drawing out from the batteries more than was going into the batteries. So it doesn't sound super convenient for the stuff that you need when you're being mobile running around at the location you go to. I understand that. So some of the stuff, maybe if you come in before the sun goes down or you've got a larger battery plant than me, go ahead and charge those things. So all of the devices that you can leave behind or recharge during the day while you're out visiting or touring, um, you know, peak sun time is the best time to be recharging those, at least for my setup, okay? So... And for other people set up, you know, if you're running around with 1200 amp hours of battery, uh, uh, lithium ion setup, man, all the power to you, I'm jealous. But for the smaller setup that we have here, uh, just knowing a couple things about um, our device usage and our appliance usage goes a long way to knowing when we should and shouldn't plug things in, charge things up, and use our devices. So it's just a little extra planning.